welcome to my very first video. I'm a little bit nervous. Hopefully this will go well and I won't have to do another retake. So here we go. Um, here is what we're going to be working on today. This is lesson 1-1 from Geometry Textbook, Understanding Points, Lines, and Planes. Now remember, I'm going to be going through things a little bit fast, but that's why you have a video. You can re-watch it as many times as you want. You can pause it as many times as you want. And I think that it'll really help. Now remember to write down questions that you have as you come across them, because we are going to be going over questions and answer time um, the following day in class. Okay? So first of all, um, this is what you're going to be taking notes on, like I said before. Uh, so we have our know-it notes. Lesson 1-1, here are the objectives for today. Identify, name, and draw points, lines, segments, and planes, and apply basic facts about these things, okay? Now, once again, remember, you can pause at this point to get yourself caught up with writing things down, okay? Now, um, the vocabulary, I'm going to leave blank because I want you to go ahead and get in your book about and write these vocabulary terms down. But we're going to be going over quite a few of them as well. So everything that's highlighted here, um, I want you to go ahead and look those up in your book. All right. So there's 11 vocabulary terms. Okay, so first of all, um, we're going to take a look at what a point is. And I've already written the definition down. A point is a location in space, and it has no size. So, for example, a point is, uh, even though it has no size, we do need to draw it. So we're going to draw a little dot, and that represents a point. Now, a point is always named with a capital letter. Capital letter. And it doesn't matter which capital letter you choose. We could do any letter of the alphabet. So I'm going to go ahead and choose P for a point. So when we talk about this, usually we just say the letter P. Sometimes you're going to write point P. It just kind of depends on the situation and what you're writing, okay? All right, so the next one is line. Now a line is a straight path. It has no thickness and extends forever and ever and ever in both directions. And here's how we draw a line. We're going to draw, and it can go any direction. I'm just choosing to go um, that way. Now we could have it go uh, this way or uh, this way or whatever. Okay, it can go a lot of different ways. Now lines are named with two points. Named with two points. Now sometimes, usually, you're going to have more than two points on the line. So for example, you'll have like a B and C. These are three, remember these are points, these are three points on the line. So it, which two points do you choose when you name the line? It doesn't matter, it's completely up to you. In fact, you can have it in any order you want. So I could choose to name this line AB. And notice that I have a little line symbol above it. That's important. So here's how we name a line with a little line symbol. And so I just chose AB, or I could choose to write to name this AC, okay, A and C, or I can even go backwards. I can go CB, okay, um, or anything, really any two points that you want. It doesn't matter which, one, which points you pick, and it doesn't matter which direction they're going, as long as there are two points on this line. These are all the same exact line. These are all equal to each other because it's this line right here. You can also call this, sometimes there's like a lowercase letter at the end of the line, like an L or an M or an N or a P or something. So if there's a lowercase letter, it's usually done by cursive, then you can also call this line, in this case, line L. We could also be line M or line Q or whatever. Okay, so that's a line. A plane is a flat surface, it has no thickness, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. Now here's how we draw a plane. Generally you draw a plane like a rectangle that's been squished, also called a parallelogram for those of you who remember your shapes. So that is, the, that is how we draw a plane. 
Now a plane always has to be named with three points, okay? With three points. So a line is named with two points and a plane is named with three points. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put some points on here and actually I'm gonna put more than three just to mess you up a little bit so you can know that it doesn't really matter which ones you pick. So I'm gonna choose um, W, X, Y, and Z. Now, I have four, but remember I only need three in order to name it. So I can name this anything I want. Usually you just name it by the three letters, any, any ones you choose. So W, X, Y. W, X, Y means this plane, or I could choose Z, W, Y. or any combination of, the th of, of these points that you want in any order, as long as it's three of them. Now, the reason why it has to be three is because if you think of like a three-legged stool, right? If you had a three-legged stool, I'll just draw one down here, a three-legged stool, this three-legged stool is touching the ground, right? And it will never, ever, ever wobble, ever because three points at the end of the legs um, is the plane of the ground, okay? It's touching the plane of the ground. As soon as you add a fourth leg, if I added a fourth leg in here, now I might be wobbling. Maybe not if it's built well, but um, it, I might be wobbling. So anytime you have a three-legged stool, I can guarantee you will never, ever, ever wobble because you only need three points, and anytime you have any three points, you have a plane. One more thing, um, you know how this line up here had a, a little lowercase letter L, and sometimes you could call it line L? Sometimes a plane will have like a, a lowercase, or sorry, an uppercase cursive letter at the, in the corner. And if that's the case, then you can call it by that uppercase cursive letter. So we would call this also plane and then M and it's usually a cursive letter, okay? So that's points, lines, and planes. So let's move on. Okay, so now a segment. Uh, a segment is part of a line and it has two endpoints. So here's a segment. We'll call this AB. And here's how I draw the seg, or I write the segment and I, and I name it by the endpoints, okay? So I can either call this a B, and notice that the symbol above it is just a line. It doesn't have arrows like the line did. The line one from before had arrows on it, right? This one does not have arrows, okay? It's just a segment. So, or we could call it BA with just the segment. Um, an end point is the point at the end, okay? So in this, picture here, we'll just use the same picture. The end points are A and B. They're the points at the end. Now, a ray is part of a line. It's actually, a lot of people think of it as half of a line because it starts in one direct. It starts in at an end point and then it goes forever and ever and ever just in one direction. And so we have just one arrow, okay? So let's name this X and Y. And to name this ray, we start, we have to name it X and then Y, and then the symbol above it is a little baby ray, okay? Now, this is not YX, okay? That is, this is not the case. That's not YX because this first point here has to be the end point of the ray. It has to be. Otherwise, it's not named correctly. All right. Two opposite rays are two rays that have the same endpoint and form a line. So um, that would look like this. You have um, three points on here, uh, A, B, C. Okay. So it, it, it looks just like a line. My two rays, my two opposite rays, so my end point is here, and if you look at it, we have a ray here, and then we have a ray here, okay? We have two rays that have the same exact end point. So the two rays are BA and BC. 
Okay? All right, so for the rest of numbers 14 and 15, you guys are going to be copying these out of your books. And don't forget to draw the pictures there. Okay? And uh, copying these out of your books, and there is no pictures for these other ones there. All right, do not worry about doing page 9. You can just go ahead and cross that out.